Okay, everybody, today we are going to be making an elevator inside of UAFN, and this is going to be primarily done in Verse. The elevator itself is done in Blender, which is a free program that you can download at any time and install and be able to get up here and grab our bacon. All right, let's get started. Okay, so we are inside UAFN here. I've opened up a completely blank project. The first thing we need to do is make our elevator. Now, to do that, we're going to go into Blender. Blender is a free piece of software. If you don't have it, download it, install it, learn to use it. It is very, very useful and is totally free. Okay, so we're here inside of Blender, and this is the default scene that comes with Blender. When you open it up, you get a light, you get a camera, and you get a cube, unless you've changed it, but this is the default. So we're going to delete our light and our camera because we just don't need them in the scene. We're going to select our cube. And if you haven't got this tool set up here on the right hand side, just hit N on your keyboard and it hides and shows that. And we want to set the Z to one, just like that. So what that's going to do is it's going to place our cube right on the floor of our scene here in Blender. This is what we want when we go into UAFN. You want all of your objects to have their pivot point right at the bottom or their source point or their origin point. And that's really important. Let's do that. Now, everything inside of UAFN is going to, you're going to want to model it based off of the character that is in Fortnite, which is 1.9 meters. Now, this cube itself, we can see here the dimensions are two by two by two. So a little bit over 1.9 meters is just right for our character. So that works out really well. So now we just want to make an elevator shape. So we're going to hit tab to go into this object. And I'm going to select the Y axis to make my doorways in here. So hit three on your keyboard, not the numpad, but just the keyboard. And we're just going to select this face here. And we can actually delete this one. Let's just go ahead and delete, hit the delete key in faces. And then over on the other side, we're going to hit I to inset. And we're just going to inset this in a little bit to make some walls. And then what we'll do is we'll just go E, hit Y for only extruding, because E is for extrude Y. And we'll bring it all the way over like so. And you can see now it's sitting out a little bit far. So we don't really want that. So what we want to do is we can go into side view and we're just going to go G, Y, and just move that over and hit the shift key or hold the shift key down while you move it. Just get it pretty darn close. And then once you've done that, you can use the middle scroll button to uh, sort of pan around a little bit. We're going to select this face, which is already selected. If it's not, just select it like that and hit delete to delete the face. Now we want to connect up these edges. And to do that, we're going to go into edge mode, hit two on your keyboard, select this one, then this one and press F and then do the same for the top one. F, this one over here, F, and the bottom one. F. And now we've got the basics of our elevator box. Easy peasy. All right, so let's tab out of that because the next thing we need to do is make the object that is going to sort of hold the elevator. I'm just going to use a couple of pillars. You can do whatever you want, but we want these objects to be two different objects. So if we hit tab, we're going into um, the mode that modifies this object. If we hit tab and come out, you can see how it's all selected like that, and we can't modify a face. This puts us into sort of the scene mode. We can make another object. So that's what we're going to do. So shift A, we're going to add in another cube and uh, we'll move this one uh, up a little bit. So it's sitting right now at uh, zero, 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 but we want this to come upwards one. So we're just going to the Z and put in one because it's two meters tall. So now that it's sitting there, I'm just going to move it over on the X. So hit G and then X and then move it over. And now we want to tap into this because we want to modify just this object. So first thing I'll do is I'll just scale on the X to make it nice and thin because it's just sort of a pillar. And then uh, we'll come over here and we'll scale on the Y and make it about half or so. It doesn't really matter. Pretty good. So now we'll move it over. We'll tab out of that and move it on the G. We'll hit G X to move it over. And we'll get it really, really, really close. Something like that. It's probably pretty good. And then we'll tab into that. We want to make it pretty tall. So let's go to side view or let's go to front view. Let's go to front view. And we can see here every 
one of these sort of darker lines is a meter, so one, two. So we're going to make this thing 10 meters. So what we can do, let's grab the top face. So we hit three on our keyboard, grab the top face, go back into front view. This is two, four, six, eight, 10. So right up here is 10. So we're just going to go G, Z, all the way up to here. And that should make it 10 meters tall. So hit A to select all, Shift D to duplicate, X to move it on the X, and we'll just shove it over next to the elevator like that. And that makes our two pillars that this thing can slide up on. And it's not a very tall elevator, but it's pretty good. Once we've done that, we just go ahead and save and export. So we'll go to File, and you can save or just plain export. So I'm just going to export an FBX file and I'm just going to export it to my desktop and export. Nothing to change in here, just that's to export it. Should be good. OK, so we're done inside of Blender. Let's minimize that. So back inside of UAFN, we want to make a folder inside of our project content and we'll just uh, make a new folder and call this um, objects. So we'll go to our desktop and we will grab our elevator tutorial FBX and just drag it in. When you do that, it's going to ask you what you want to do. Just import all should be fine. Here we can see we've got the elevator. We've got the elevator shaft holder thingies, the pillars, and then a color of white. Now we didn't color this inside of Blender. We could do that. So we could do that inside of Blender, but um, we're going to skip that for now. Materials is just not very important right now. So with this imported, we're going to drag in our pillars and then not dragging in our cube. We don't need our cube yet. The other thing, the first thing actually that we should do, uh, because right now the bounding box or the collision box of these pillars is going to be all the way around them. We won't actually even be able to walk through these pillars right now. It's really quite weird. So we'll double click this and inside of collision, just do auto convex collision. Down here, it'll say convex, uh, decomposition, hull count of four, max, max hull versus 16. That's fine. Hull precision is 100,000, I think. And we'll just hit apply. And what that will do is it will make a basic collision for our object. So go ahead and save that, close that. And we'll do the same thing for the cube. So collision, auto, convex, apply. And that will make a basic collision bounding box. And uh, what that does is it allows us to be able to walk into this box. Otherwise, the collision is going to be all around it and you won't be able to even get in. So hit save and that should be good. OK, so we don't want to just drag our cube in and try to put it here because we actually can't control it. So we're going to delete that and then we'll go back into our content. We're going to make another folder, a folder called Blueprints. Blueprints, just like that. We'll open that up and we're going to make a new Blueprint class and just make it a building prop. And we're going to call this elevator box, just like that. Double click it to open it, select this, go over to here, go find our elevator box. Let's just look for it, elevator cube, which is this one here. And that will bring in our elevator cube box thingy. So we'll compile and then save. And this is what we want to drag onto the stage like so. So let's go take a look at that and make sure it's in a pretty good position. It looks good. Amazingly, right? OK, so let's just double check that it actually works. So we will launch a session. Save selected. OK, let's get into this session here. And uh, we're just going to double check that we can walk into the elevator. OK, we are in. Let's uh, let's walk over here and walk in. So you can see we can walk in. That works out quite well. No problem at all. Although I got to admit the collision is a little bit off. That's something we definitely have to work on later, maybe for another tutorial. For now, we can get on the elevator. That's all that matters. OK, let's go back into UAFN. OK, so now that we've got our elevator figured out inside of here, we need a trigger. So we could use a button, but I'm just going to use a trigger device so that when we when we walk into the elevator, uh, we'll make sure to make this invisible in the game. OK, so if you've never used a trigger device, this is what it looks like. It essentially is a thing that works when you step on it. 
in this case. And what we want to do is we want to tie this to the elevator box. So we're going to drag the trigger here in the outliner to elevator box, and that's going to put it in there. So if we were to move the elevator box, the trigger goes with it. All right. So with the trigger inside of here, the trigger device is essentially going to make our elevator do a thing. So that's set up. That's good. Uh, we want to now do some verse code. So it's some simple stuff. So if you're getting, if you get a little bit kind of worried, uh, don't worry, this isn't going to be that difficult to do. So what we want to do is we want to hit verse explorer, right click on our project, add a new verse file to the project. We're just going to call this game manager and then hit create and then double click it. And that will take you into the verse editor. So inside of the verse editor, we need to access that trigger. So we're going to make an editable. If any of this does seem confusing, then check out the tutorial I've linked down below on the basics of doing verse. So let's make our elevator trigger. I'll just call it trigger. And this is a trigger device like so equals trigger like that. So that's how we're going to instantiate to the game that we are going to use a trigger device. And we're going to link this in the game manager in the game in a minute here. So the other thing that we need to do is be able to access the elevator object. So we'll just call this elevator box maybe. And then this is, and this is a creative prop. So we can go creative prop, just like that. So that allows us to have a trigger to do something, which in this case is going to make the elevator go up. And then we've got the creative prop, which is the actual elevator box that we're going to reference as well. So with that out of the way, let's start writing some code. So let's do our functions. Let's go um, on elevator trigger event. So we're making a function that the trigger is going to call. So we're just going to do this first. And this passes in an agent and it's an unsure thing. So <laughs> We put a little question mark in there equals and we don't have anything going on just yet. We're just going to put a block. A block is required because if you don't have this in here, then the verse compiler, whatever it's doing automatically loses its mind. So, for example, if we take out these two here, it'll give us a red mark here it says there needs to be something in here. You need to do something. And so now let's do something. Let's get rid of this to do. We don't need that either. First thing we want to do is we want to go elevator trigger and we want to grab the triggered event. So we can go trigger event like that and then subscribe like that. Oops. And then we'll put in the on elevator trigger event. OK, so trigger event is not it. And this is actually really good to kind of see because uh, I can't remember exactly what it is. So what we're going to do is we're going to hit control and then left click trigger device. And that will take us into the code that has all the functionality for this trigger device. And there's three things. Uh, and we want triggered event, not trigger events. So let's go back, paste that in, trigger event, and that gets rid of that. And then online elevator trigger event seems to be having a problem. Unknown identifier. So I guess I probably have a, a, a typo. And I did on elevator trigger event. This one said something else. There you go. So there's a little bit of code debugging as we go. So this, this is going to pass in a possible agent. So maybe the agent triggered it, maybe it didn't. And so that's why we need this question mark here. Otherwise, we would just get if we get rid of this question mark, it's going to yell at us and say, hey, this is a possible agent. It's not guaranteed to be an agent, so it can fail. Let's put in a question mark. Verse is kind of weird this way. Uh, I mean, I don't know a better way to explain it other than that. OK, so now that we've got that figured out, let's make our move elevator function. So let's call it move elevator. Just going to go void because it doesn't return anything. And now we can call this move elevator. And the thing about move elevator is it actually has to do a thing and then do a thing and then do a thing. So it needs to move a thing and the move to function puts the program to sleep. What we have to do is we actually have to spawn a new thread in the game. So we'll go spawn and then move elevator. But when we do that, we have to say that the move elevator function actually suspends the thread. So we have to put in suspense. I've covered all this in my other tutorial, so you will want to check that out. So we don't need to use sleep. Other, I mean, we could put in here uh, sleep 1.0 and get rid of all of our errors right there, because sleep is a method that is used to put a thread to sleep, makes it pause. And um, but we're not going to be doing that. We're going to be using move two. 
Okay, so I'm just going to copy and paste in the code because I don't want to write it all out, um, but we're going to go over it. So first thing I do is I usually print in some debugging code that's going to come up in the log. We don't need this, but I'm going to put it in for now. The original position is, is important to know what the position of the elevator is when this runs, because we're going to use this for, we, we could use this, we don't need to use this, but we could use this this to figure out a direction or a way or a thing to do. If it's in the very top position and you hit the trigger, maybe you get some gold. I don't know, whatever. So if, we, if the original position is going to be where the elevator is right now, the final position is going to be where we want the elevator to be. Now, how did I figure this out and what this? These are vector three. So it's going to complain at us right now because we don't have uh, the spatial math in here. So let's bring that in. And this is a library that we bring in and and load in to make things go. So the elevator, I've named it here different than, than today. So elevator box is what we want. And we're going to get transform and translation. This is going to give us the location in a vector three, which is just an X, Y, Z map, I guess you could call it. So it's a vector three object. And our final position is going to be the original position X, the original position Y. So that's another reason why we want this original position, because we don't want to have to put in actual numbers. We can just say, look, it doesn't need to move on the X and Y, but it does need to move on the Z. And in this case, uh, the final position is 1892. It might not be. So let's go take a look in the game. So we can see right here, if we click on this and we go to the details panel, it's sitting at zero. Now these numbers are kind of weird. So what we're going to do is we're going to go 707, 233, so that it's not sitting on some fraction of a float value. And the Z is at, and the Z is at zero. So then we can take this elevator, we can move it to where we want it to be, which could be somewhere about there. And it says 800. So let's go 800, see if that looks good. 800 does look good. Okay, so we know it's going to be 800. So let's go back to zero, go back into our verse file. And then we know that we want this to go up to 800. So that is going to be our final position in a vector three. Now we just need to loop and we're going to loop through a move that will take it from the bottom to the top. So the current position again is elevator. So let's run through this really quickly. Our current position is once again got through a vector three, we're going to we're going to measure the distance with the distance method that lives inside of the spatial math library. And we want to take the current position and the final position and see if it's more than 20. I put 20 in here because this is kind of the speed that we're moving this up. If we think about it, every tick that we do, we're going to move it 20 pixels. I don't know what it is, 20 units of movement. And uh, we're just making a new Z which is a float, uh, the current position Z plus 20. So we're just we're taking the elevator position and we're just adding 20 each time over a period of time, which is done in the move to function. So the move to function requires a vector three. It requires a rotation value, which is just going to be the rotation of the elevator box, which is whatever it is. We're not passing in anything different. And then every point three of a tick, we want it to do this thing. And so that's it. This is this is why we suspend because this 0 0.3 value at the very end. So if we scroll over move two, we can see it does a thing over time and it's a float. So over 0 0.3 ticks here, we're going to move 20 pixels. Up. We we do this until we reach the point that we want to get to and, and then we break and that's it. Now, there are other ways to do this. I like this method. It's easy. It's a it's a simple way to do it. And you can even change this to speed. So if you want to make a speed value, so you could put um, elevator speed, which is a float equals 20.0. And then you can just take elevator speed and put it here so that you can change it in one spot. Maybe you have fast elevators, maybe you have slow elevators, maybe you want to change it based on what's going on. But keep in mind that that Fortnite using the move to method sometimes gets a little glitchy and weird. So keep that in mind. You're going to want to check that out. And uh, and that's it. And that's how you make this go up and down. We can hit save. We'll go build verse code. Last thing that we need to do, go into our content browser, go into our creative devices and then grab our game manager. Bring it in. I don't know if we built the verse code, did we? So build the verse code. Make sure that you've got your elevator trigger set here. You've got your elevator box set here. And we'll actually hide this in the game. And that should be it. Now we can save everything, push changes, and wait. OK, we're in the game, finally. And so we're going to hop off of here, go into here. Trigger starts. And up we go. Just like that. <laughs> And we're at the top. So there you go. So that's the elevator code. 
and methodology to get this to work. <laughs> we just need to be able to get it back down. And now we just need to be able to get it back down. So um, no problem. Uh, in another tutorial, maybe I will, maybe I'll make uh, another one that will use some buttons instead of the trigger. All right, that's it for this one. I'll see you guys in the next one.